All right, welcome to Thinker Metrics and the Fun with Data series. So, fun with your data. So, for today, we are going to bring in Eventbrite data uh, and export that and visualize it in Tableau. So, Eventbrite's an awesome company, been around for quite a while. And I don't know about you, but I've been attending a ton of like Zoom events and workshops and other things. And some of them use Eventbrite to manage the ticketing and attendees and even monetize it. So, that's great for the creators and the uh, event organizers to be able to collect money and then control access to as uh, the ability to link there into Zoom. And I've been using them for a number of years for everything from company events uh, to uh, conferences and all sorts of fun stuff as well. So we should have a good amount of stuff to visualize. Uh, don't forget to follow Thinker Metrics on Spotify. We're called 100% Intro to Analytics, Instagram, Thinker Metrics, Twitter as well. A lot of the channel is really about, you know, for non-analytics people that are a little bit new to the subject, how do we look at actual digital metrics and have fun uh, uncovering uh, what really matters with those numbers and have a little bit of fun. So in that uh, sense, we have already a number of videos out there that are related to this one. You can check out how to pull in your own Amazon order history, your Uber rides, and we do some fun stuff pulling any Twitter data, including our own, into some of the no-code tools. So with Wayscript and Monkey Learn, we're able to drag and drop and do some really cool stuff with AI to classify tweets, for example, and look at the sentiment analysis on how positive or negative that text analysis is. So a lot of cool stuff to do today. We're going to hop over to eventbrite.com on the upper right where my smiling face is. You will find your account settings. Click that and you will see this screen where you can see personal data on the lower left highlighted and you will click that big button that says request file and that'll kick off a batch process that will eventually send you two emails. One with the zip file of your data and another with the password. So definitely keep both files. It will require a password to open that zip file, which is nice and secure of them. Really cool way to do it. Uh, but check that out, uh, kick off this request, get those two emails, and then come on back here to the video and we are going to process it with Excel and then visualize it in Tableau. So go ahead and do that and we will get started. All right, welcome back. So now that you have a file and a password in your email, we are ready to rock this out and look at your Eventbrite data. So the first step here, you'll see your compressed file that you were given and downloaded. So user underscore and then a bunch of numbers, which is the number that is assigned to you to organize everything around your personal data. And because that is compressed, we need to extract that. So on Windows, that's right click and extract all and Mac command or whatever will get you to the same thing. So you will have a normal folder uncompressed and it'll look something like this. So minus two files in a years, we'll just have this one, uh, user underscore and then those series of numbers and it is an XML file. So normally when I'm doing these videos, we are pulling into Tableau an Excel file or a comma separated file like a CSV that you would export from maybe Facebook, for example, or a .json that might be available from Twitter or somewhere else, uh, or all of the many Excel files that most of business throughout the entire world is still predominantly run on, although that's changing and that's why we're learning these skills. So we have this and we are going to use Excel to process that XML file into something that's a little bit more like what we're used to with a table of uh, data ready to rock. So here is our Excel book and we can go to file and then find that user underscore XML file and uh, Excel will have two pop-ups. This first one, how do you want to open it? As an XML table. So you can click okay there and it'll say this XML source does not refer to a data schema. And so Excel will create one for you. So that's exactly what we want it to do. So you can go ahead and click okay on that. And we will go from there. So here is that converted data. It has a lot of personal information as well. So I'm focusing on the event title. Uh, so a lot of uh, events here over the number of years, you can see looks like 127 or so. Uh, and so we are good to go. So we can get out of Excel. We are done in the conversion process. And now we can take that Excel file. So you'll want to go file, save as, and name it something new and make sure it's a 
uh, excel.xlsx file, and that is what we can bring into Tableau. So we can go ahead and connect to that data, and now that it is an Excel file, we can choose that option and click the converted button there and open. So we will have that ready to go. So that is my finished product file. We actually kind of want to look at this one. So there we go. So here is the event title in the data source tab. So you can see all the fields that were brought in are here and Tableau did its best guess at guessing the data types. So text string for the event name and it picked up on geography for city and state. So everything that Tableau does really amazing. It's already got that out here and ready to rock. All right, now that we have our data in here for Tableau, uh, we have our Eventbrite personal data and Tableau did its best guess on guessing the data types. And like we were talking about, I wanted to understand what was happening over time, especially in the last year. Did it change what organizers, what events I was going to and that kind of thing. Um, so that's really what's in mind. Like what are the events uh, and how did that happen over time? And what were the trends and that kind of thing? So there's a number of graphs I want to create, but that's what I'm going to start to do to explore. I did notice start date here is the date. So I want to know over time. So I'm looking at a date. I can see this one pretty easily, but Tableau brought it in as a string for some reason. I do know that is a date and time. So I'm going to convert that right here. You can also do that in the data source tab. So there are other ways to do things in Tableau, uh, but that's great. So we're going to bring in start date up here. Uh, but before I do that, actually, let's see if we can right click on start dates and then we want to make sure it is continuous. So I want to look at the dates in a way where it's like really smooth across the whole way. And the best way to do that is continuous. And so it's going to bring it in when I drag and drop that there into columns as year. I don't want just year. Uh, I'm going to want the exact date. So that is fine. And then it'll be simple with the year over time as long as I have it set to that continuous mode. And now we need to bring in what I was talking about. So I was talking about the organizer. I want to know what that looks like over these years and see how that changes. So it brought them all in here uh, and it also did automatic. I'm not sure I really like how that displays. So I'm going to change it to a circle. Can get rid of the search there. So circle looks a little bit better. I'm pretty tired of that default uh, blue. So I'm going to change it to a green. So a lot of times when I have a number of uh, data points that are close together and uh, almost overlapping, I reduce the opacity. So you can see the lighter ones are just on their own, but when it's like a lot darker with intensity, then they're overlapping. So it's a little bit nicer to see it that way. And I can increase the size a little bit uh, to make it a little bit more obvious. So one thing we can do here to help answer that question on the organizer is to sort. So I'm going to choose uh, organizer and we can sort. Uh, so right now it's just by order. So it's alphabetical and we can do by field. Uh, it does not make sense to search by address. So I don't know what we could find that would do a better uh, version than this. So we want a count of something unique. Uh, and those are mostly my uh, data points like email and things like that. So the event name though is probably good unless it was the exact same event name. We should be good on the count there because usually even if it's the same type of event, they'll add like a number to it or a month or some other variation to that as well. Uh, so now we are sorting uh, on that. But it is ascending. So it was the smallest to the, the biggest. We want to go descending, largest to smallest. So awesome. So now we have a little bit of a trend over time. You can see that the organization just add yoga and me had a, a good stretch of time there uh, with a lot of uh, yoga events uh, that are a little bit fun at breweries and things like that. And some daybreaker events as well, little fun morning dance parties and things like that. So uh, you can see from the tech events of the early 2010s to the yoga events of the later 2020s, you already got a data story emer emerging. So it depends on whatever your data looks like. You can have your own data story, but let's uh, rename this tab events by organizer and date. And we have our first graph ready to rock.
So I like to keep these videos a little bit short and sweet. So I have a number of other graphs I wanna show you for some options to display some of the similar data and you can kind of explore on your own and I'll just call out what's a little bit different. So we started with a graph where we had uh, just circles as the mark and it just plotted it over time and you can see what the most frequent organizers were. So beyond the organizer, the other thing I mentioned um, was the event name when we were trying to come up with a count that would make useful for something fun. And so that's one thing we can do here. So the count of sheet one um, for those is also a measure here. So what I did was drag and drop that onto color and that's what gave us this intensity. So the number of times of an event um, which shows up in the data is uh, the most intense with that color as well. So you can organize it by uh, organizer and then by event name. So what I did was a bar chart that you could have both the event and the organizer so you can see how that works out. So we're gonna look at that a couple different ways, but this is one way to do it. It is quite a bit of text, but it is kind of nicely organized. And at least the bar charts give the viewer something to look at really quickly. So you can see sort of what jumps out uh, there as well. So the top organizers for events. So I did that so you could just see very cleanly what are the number uh, of events that I've been to and who were the organizers for that and who are the top ones. Um, so notice I did do an exclusion. So you can always right click on something um, or left click and then click exclude. So you know some of them didn't have an organizer listed for the name, for example, and so they were coming in under null. You know, I might look in the data and see what those are actually coming from, and that's fine. But, you know, for my purposes, I'm just trying to find out what are the actual organizers that I was going to most frequently and then how to display that over time. So we did try that circle chart here. Another thing you can do is this sort of uh, graph as well. And so you can have this table that then shows an intensity in the block. So without looking at numbers and you're kind of getting more of a feel from it based on the intensity and you can uh, see what years these were most active. So you can see with Just Add Yoga, 2017 was just a yoga party the whole way through. And then there's uh, other years where different things were happening in 2021, uh, some events as well, um, some product management events and things like that. And, you know, the live music ones were not this year. So kind of fun to see that a little bit sad, but the other kind of thing I was trying to think about, which is a little bit different in those is to, uh, because we have both the venue and the event organizer that could change. So obviously we went virtual for a lot of these things, uh, as well, but how do you display that to the user? And I wanted to see both the venue and the organizer and then see, uh, what that looked like. So there's, two ways I did this. One was kind of graph the venue as the text and then the color, which I don't usually like more than a few colors, but what I was trying to pull out here is, so for this venue, Columbia Tower, is it two different uh, organizations, which it is. So the Product Management Consortium has a cool little conference and they were using the Columbia Tower Club. I was also at that same venue for Just Add, Add Yoga for some champagne and yoga uh, as well. Uh, so it's kind of funny to see the different events at the same venues that I would go to, or for that organizer, what are the different events? So for Just Add Yoga, you know, they'd go to a cider place, a distillery, um, the collective, which is a workspace in Seattle, um, different beer gardens and uh, stuff like that, but sometimes also the Columbia Tower Club at the top of a building in downtown Seattle. So it's kind of fun to see both the uh, different venues and organizers uh, there as well. So just different ways of looking at it. And then of course, you know, the money, the money never escapes us. Where did I spend the most money with these events? Uh, looks like a yoga festival in Germany, uh, in Garmisch Partikirchen <laughs> is the number one on the ticket. And they use that for the ticketing. Uh, just at yoga spent almost as much money there over time and some other fun things like Daybreaker, uh, RGD design organization and other fun events and things like that. So this is another one where I took uh, a different number this time. So we looked for the uh, gross amount and there's gross and gross 42. I'm not sure exactly what's going on with their data, which one's which. I just grabbed one of them and then I was able to drag and drop that on the color 
And so it automatically aggregates in Tableau as a sum, which is fine for me. I want a sum of all the money I've spent with that organizer uh, there. So you can see that the max 597 will be the darkest and go to the lightest. So just another fun way to look at your own personal data in Eventbrite. So check it out and pop in the comments if you found out anything interesting in your own data story and uh, would love to hear from you. So thanks for checking this out and follow the YouTube channel and we're happy to share more with